Hey, what's going on YouTube? Ben at TendalTradingAnalysis.com. So hey, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I am a little bit of a tech geek at heart. I've been building computers since I was eight or 10 years old, uh, thanks to my father introducing me to technology at a very early age. And I was having a conversation with Todd last year and he said, hey dude, would you mind putting together a new PC for me? And I said, sure, I'd love to do that. Any excuse to order up some new hardware and, and put together a new build. So I've already ordered the majority of the components. I've got them right here behind me. Uh, I just placed a curbside order at the local Best Buy. So why don't you guys join me? We'll jump in the car, head over to Best Buy, and we'll come back to the office and I'll talk you through the components for the build. A few moments later. All right, we're back at the office. Let's go through the components. So first up, we've got ASUS's ROG Strix X299 Gaming 2 motherboard. This is the 299 chipset from Intel, as opposed to the Z390 or Z490 that you are, are probably more accustomed to. And the reason being is Todd needs the ability to have two, if not three video cards in the future. So we couldn't be limited by K-series CPUs with the Z390 and Z490 chipsets only offering 16 PCIe lanes. And the reason we went with Intel as opposed to an AMD build is the fact that we use vMix and vMix compatibility on the AMD side is certainly there, but not quite as tested as Intel. So we stuck with the tried and true Intel 299 chipset should do him well. All right, for the CPU, we went with Intel's i9-10900X. This is a 10-core offering from Intel. This comes stock at 3.7 gigahertz, and it turbo boosts certain cores up to 4.7, but I'm actually running all 10 cores at 4.2 gigahertz, so it's a constant rate clock. We've disabled Intel speed step technology, so this should do him quite well. In terms of RAM, we went with yet another Corsair product, this time 64 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz DDR4 RAM. Now this isn't diamond studded RGB colored, but it does the trick, can't complain. In terms of storage, obviously he does a lot of video work, etc. So I wanted to make sure he had a lot of onboard storage and not just onboard storage, but onboard storage that was fast. So I went with Samsung's 970 EVO Plus. These are NVMe M.2 SSDs. They're absolutely incredible. We have two, two terabyte sticks, uh, I was considering going with a RAID configuration, but given the fact that I live in a different state and I wouldn't be there to troubleshoot if anything went wrong, I wanted to prioritize stability over speed uh, or redundancy, depending on which RAID configuration we went with. So we've got two, two terabytes, four terabytes of total onboard storage. For his graphics card, we went with an NVIDIA product. This is NVIDIA's Quadro RTX 4000. This has eight gigs of video RAM with support for up to four monitors. He's likely gonna be adding a second, if not third video card in the future. Uh, but this should do the trick in the meantime. I was considering going with one of Intel's new, or excuse me, Intel, one of Nvidia's new RTX 3000 series. Uh, but given that those are more driven towards gamers and he's not gonna be doing a lot of gaming, he's primarily gonna be focused on production style work as well as vMix. I wanted to prioritize that uh, over the occasional gaming that he might do. So we went with Nvidia's Quadro RTX 4000. You guys fell for it. This is an old video card from I don't know when, but it's it's not the new one. But I got you guys. And last but certainly not least, his CPU cooling. We went with the liquid cooler here. This is a 360 millimeter radiator, uh, three 120 millimeter Corsair RGB fans. It's a great setup. It really is. A lot of people have been uh, a little hesitant to move into the world of liquid cooling, but given the fact that I didn't want a you know 10 pound massive monstrosity of a heat sink on top of his motherboard in transit to New York, I decided let's go with a liquid cooler. This is gonna be a little safer of an offering. I'm not gonna to have to worry about it in transit breaking or maybe creating a, a micro fracture, stress fracture in the motherboard. So great liquid cooler. Um, you know, in five or so years, you might have to top it off, uh, top off the radiator or take it in and, and, and get a new one. But great offering. We'll take a look at this as well as uh, some of the custom lighting features that you can do in just a second. Now in terms of the case, I went with yet another Corsair product. This is the 270R offering from Corsair with a window side panel. 
we get a nice view uh, of the internals on this build. Now with the liquid cooler that we were just looking at, it comes with a control head that gives you uh, independent control of up to six different fixtures. So in this case, the radiator, the 360 millimeter radiator ships with three 120 millimeter fans. But I also need three additional 120 mil fans for the case, case circulation uh, in general. So what we decided to do, I placed this order, we ran over to Best Buy together, you guys were in the car with me just a minute ago, and these are RGB fans. So we've got RGB uh, color controlled fans, this is going to pair up with the controller that runs the, not only the pump head, so the water cooler pump head that sits on top of the CPU, this also controls the LED in the fans on the radiator, and now it's going to control the three fans in the case. So we're going to be able to do some really fun lighting effects. Uh, being that it is RGB, this is not uh, just for looks, okay? RGB, it actually adds about two or 300 megahertz per core. All right, guys, we are pretty much all but there. We've got the motherboard mounted. We've got our RAM installed. We have our two Samsung 970 Evo Plus NVMe M.2 SSDs on board. Uh, really cool heat sinks that sit on top of them, actually. It's kind of interesting. We've got our water cooler installed, 360 millimeter front mounted radiator. Any of you keyboard cowboys on the internet, if you guys are looking at my front mounted radiator, and you're saying, oh man, you, you've got it installed wrong. You can't have your barbs at the top on a front mounted radiator install. Well, I'd invite you on an exploration, uh, a journey of exploration in the world of physics. Okay, as long as your pump is not the highest point on your system, you don't have to worry about air ever entering the pump. In fact, there shouldn't be air in the system at all. Pump top of radiator. Good to go. been a lot of fun getting to know you and bringing you into this world but I think it's time for you to go now it's time for you to go to your new forever home what are you worried about don't look at me that way he'll take great care of you of course he's used to fast computers <laughs> uh yeah yeah I see what you mean it's okay I've got a solution yeah hello Intel I need to purchase some training wheels that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. A little bit of comedy along the way. Uh, hey, if you're interested in more vlogs, maybe some aviation-related stuff, uh, drop a like, maybe drop a comment, and subscribe. Turn on notifications to stay up to date with myself and the rest of the trading analysis team. Have a good one, and we'll catch you guys on the next video.